So you'll probably want to remind people that it's being recorded. Mm. Nope, people are joining in. Perfect. Let me... Hello, hello. Thank you for joining us. Hello, thank you for joining us this Saturday morning. We'll wait until we everyone. get a few more people in and then we'll get started. Oh, Rebecca, was, was John joining us this morning or no? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. Hello, hello. Thank you for joining us. We'll get started shortly. We're just going to see who else comes in. As we're waiting for people to join in, if everyone in chat either wants to say what school they're coming from or who you're joining us from today, that'd be awesome. Or just a good morning. I see someone has their hand raised. Do you have a question? If you have a question, you can either pop it in the chat or the Q&A. Um, and also, before we get started, um, just want to double check that everyone has downloaded the practice media kit that you got linked to when you registered for the workshop. If not, I'm going to pop that link in chat and please download the practice media kit. All folders that you see there, the footage, graphics, music folders. Um, oh, it says the, chats is disabled. Oh, chats disabled? Yeah. Let's see. I guess they could put stuff in Q&A um, they want. Um, also, Yvonne, no, we cannot see anyone because it's a webinar. So you can only see us and then all attendees are muted and your cameras are off. Um, but there we go. Did we enable chat? Show chat previews. Attendees can chat with everyone. Try that now, guys. Can you chat now? Ah, great. Perfect. Okay. Morning, morning, morning. Hello, chat. So good morning. I'm going to send that link again in chat. Um, so if you haven't downloaded the practice media kit that we'll be using for editing exercise in the second half of the workshop today, please click on that and download those three folders that you see there. It's a footage, graphics, and music folder along with an assignment description. So grab that, download it. It's about like half a gig. So if you start it now and your internet connection is slow, it should be done by the time we're, we're ready to edit. Um, but yeah. So I could just start, Lauren, I'll just make a little brief introduction. Hi, everyone. I'm Rebecca. I'm with the uh, Television Academy, the Chicago Midwest chapter. Uh, we're thrilled, thrilled, thrilled to have Lauren with us today, uh, who's going to help us learn a little bit about editing. Um, she's, she was giving me a bit of her history uh, during our pre-talk, and it's amazing. It's, she's accomplished so much in her short career, even doing professional work in high school. So she's very impressive. Um, and also, I just want to remind everyone that if you're in high school, we do have a scholarship deadline coming up for those who live in our chapter region. 
Um, it's for seniors going into to college if you're studying if you're going to be studying television. Uh, you can go to our website at chicagoemmy.org um, and look up the student section. We're also accepting applications right now for our junior board. We're accepting new applications, so that could be under that can also be found in the um, junior board section. And if you're in the student section, and if you're still in high school, our high school awards are coming up. So if your high school is within our ADA, ADI, our region of the chapter, um, entries are due March 3rd. So please uh, enter our high school competition as well. If you win regionally, uh, you go on to compete nationally. And last year we had an amazing turnout in, our, in the national competition we had. I think five winners nationally, I can't remember if that's the exact number, so. And I see Chris Bloff, who's here. Um, he's from um, either the dad <laughs> or the student. Uh, they're from Crown Point and Crown Point won nationally last year, Crown Point High School, so go oh, Crown Point. So without further ado, let me introduce Lauren. She's gonna tell you a little bit about her background and um, thanks so much for joining us. Awesome. Thank you so much, Rebecca. So good morning, everyone. Hello. Thank you so much for joining the webinar today. I'm so excited to talk to you guys about editing and to work on a little exercise with everyone. Um, so today's workshop, we're going to focus on what it means to work as an editor, what good habits you should form to kind of prepare yourself for a better career, and also a crash course of Adobe Premiere Rush and a small editing project to go along with that. Um, but before we jump into that, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I attended DePaul University and graduated in 2021 with majoring in uh, film and television editing and minoring in visual effects and 3D animation. Right after I graduated college, I started working at Weigel Broadcasting, which is the people who own MeTV, Decades, The Start Network, all those channels. And I was working as their media coordinator and assistant editor which basically means I was handling all of their footage for all of the TV shows that they shoot locally and managing the footage, tagging stuff, creating like multi-cams for the editors, doing string outs for the editors, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then in 2022, in January, I switched jobs and I joined Carbon Visual Effects as a visual effects compositor for commercials. Carbon mainly works on national commercials for large brands and I am basically like a junior compositor. So I'm working on cleanup work for commercials, which is like, you know, oh, you know, the boom accidentally got in the shot. I'm the person who will digitally remove that, cleaning up actors so they look nice and pretty, cleaning up products so they look the best they possibly can. And I've worked for numerous brands at Carbon, uh, including Marriott Hotels and Starburst and Skittles, Clorox, Ford, all that kind of stuff. So you'll see my commercials on TV, which is kind of wild, um, but it's been super fun. So basically that's who I am. Um, and now we're gonna jump into our short lecture portion of the workshop today, where we kind of talk about editing. And if at any point in time, you have a question about anything that I'm talking about, you can either pop it in chat or we also have the Q&A feature, which you could put in there as well. Um, and like I said before, if you join late, if you do not have the uh, practice media kit downloaded, please do so. I've uh, popped the link in chat for you to download off of Google Drive. So please have that ready for later on. But without further ado, let me share my screen here. And let's get started. Uh, one second, here's my... Screen one, optimize for video, share. Okay, let me pop chat down here so I can see it. And you should be seeing my slideshow. All right, so like I said today, brief overview is we're gonna be doing this lecture. We're gonna do a crash course of Adobe Premiere Rush, and then we're going to do an editing exercise where you guys are going to edit a 15 second commercial for a fake pizza restaurant called Joe's Pizzeria. So let's start in generics. What is a video editor? It's a very, it's a term that has a lot of, you know, definitions. It could apply to a lot of different people because editors work on such a vast variety of content. In general, a video editor 
is someone who manages footage, selects the best takes, and constructs a story through deliberate pacing of and cuts of clips. And depending on the size of the company that the editor is working for, they also might be in charge of leveling audio and mixing audio, creating and adding graphics, and color correcting the footage. If it's a large company, there's going to be individual departments of people that do that. So there's going to be an audio department, there's going to be a 2D and 3D animation department, and then a color department. But if you're working by yourself, you're kind of involved, you're kind of in charge of all of these things. So good editors can wear a lot of hats and know a little bit about everything to create that final product. And also editors today, they can work on an extremely wide range of content and genres. And of course there's movies and TV, but you also have news and documentaries, commercial work, corporate, like corporate work, and then um, online content like YouTube or all social media. Um, and also wedding videos, wedding content is a huge industry where there's a lot of editors that need to edit wedding videos. I actually worked for a wedding company for a while. Um, it's kind of fun content to do, to edit like huge hour long videos of, of weddings. <laughs> um, and most production companies today, most post houses um, require their editors to use either Adobe Premiere or um, Avid Media Composer. Final Cut Pro and Sony Vegas are pretty much being phased out at this point. Avid Media Composer has been the industry standard for years, um, but slowly Premiere is starting to kind of enter in the, the industry and people are using that professionally now. Um, so with all of that being said, if you wanna pursue being an editor, what's the kind of career path that you're gonna take? Well, usually your career trajectory is you're gonna start as an intern or a runner. So let's say you're in college and by your junior or senior year, you're probably looking to get an internship at a media company or a post-production house. And that internship will either be a runner position where you're kind of the office gopher doing chores around the office, prepping rooms for clients, that kind of stuff. Or you're actually going to be able to handle footage and shadow artists and kind of learn by doing. If I could recommend you an internship, I'd recommend you find one that actually lets you touch footage or, you know, shadow artists instead of doing your office chores, because you're going to learn more if you actually start working footage with footage early on in your career. Um, so start somewhere like that. And then from there, you're going to move up to a media coordinator. And a media coordinator is someone who handles all of the footage and knows where everything is for a production company. So if someone has a question about some type of file, where is it located, you'll know where that is, or you're going to be ingesting all the footage after a shoot and organizing everything, creating proxies, all that jazz. And then after being a media coordinator, you're gonna move up to an assistant editor. An assistant editor, now you're in the editing program, you're creating bins and organizing footage into folders for your senior editors. You're doing string out edits where you're looking at the script and just loosely throwing things together so then a more senior editor can continue on with their job. You're maybe pulling sound effects or pulling assets that the editors will need, um, creating multicams, that kind of stuff. And then from there, you're just gonna keep moving up the ladder to junior editor, editor, senior editor, and then even like manager positions if you want to. And each of those positions just come with more and more artistic freedom and direction over the final product more responsibilities and that kind of stuff. So um, that being said, what makes somebody a good editor? To me, there's six core qualities that make someone a very good editor, which we're gonna talk about in detail. So the first one is organization. I think organization is the key to someone, be, to, to someone being a really good editor. Organization should be an editor's top priority. This is organization of footage, project files, deadlines, client notes, schedules. Organization is key. And I think everyone has their own method of organization, but it's incredibly important to figure out what makes you organized. Is that writing things down physically? Is that having a color code for yourself? Is that using some type of app to control all of your notes and all of your schedules, calendars, all that kind of stuff, but figure out a method of organization that you're going to utilize 
for every single project because you always need to stay organized. Number two is timeliness. Every editor is on a deadline and it is imperative that you are always on time with your work and you stay on task. Everything has to go out at some point and you need to make sure that your final product is ready on time. Because if not, you're gonna kind of mess up the whole line of production, which is not gonna be good. So timeliness is definitely a huge skill that you need to learn to be a good editor. And number three is communication. An editor is just usually one small member of a much, much larger team. And communication is key for a successful post-production pipeline. Whether you're communicating to your producer about client notes or you're commuting directly to the client about what they want for their final product, having that really great communication skills with on not only just talking in person, catching up with emails, being timely in your you know, messages back and forth with clients, producers, whoever, it's really, really important. And you have to learn how to work as a team. Number four is ability to take constructive feedback. Now, this one is definitely a learned task because feedback is sometimes hard to take when you're starting out because your edit feels very, very personal to you. It's, it's your art, it's your creation. So when you show that to somebody and then they start critiquing it or tearing it apart or maybe not being so nice, it kind of hurts. It, it's not a great feeling because you've dedicated so much time and suddenly someone doesn't like it. And although that's sad to begin with, it's, it's something that you just kind of over time get to appreciate and you like, like you'll get to a point where you like people to rip apart your work because it gives you a fresh pair of eyes to look at what you've done and maybe learn something new and maybe rethink the way that you do things. And I think just over time, as you show your work to more people, you hear people's feedback. You also get to learn the, the skill of filtering good critiques from bad critiques and just kind of learning how to take a step back and, and kill your darlings and figure out the best way for you to become a better artist. Um, so ability to take feedback. Is a huge thing to learn. Number five is problem solving. I believe that great editors are great problem solvers. Whether tech issues pop up or a lackluster script hangs in the balance of the edit, editors are always solving problems and finding new ways to make the end product the best it can possibly be. And like I said, Problems can be tech, so it's up to you to figure out, you know, why isn't Premiere working? Why is this file not importing or is it buggy? Um, you know, why isn't this scene working? What, what's, what's wrong with the edit that doesn't make the scene of this film work? You're just always trying to figure out solutions and either having those skills to look up solutions to those problems, whether it's online or finding the people on your team or friends that know those answers. It's just always coming up with ways to solve problems so then the end product is the best it can possibly be. And lastly, the skill, a good skill for editors to have is the skill of storytelling. Editing is both a technical and artistic job. Good editors know how to tell stories through visuals. Understanding pacing and how pacing affects a story is crucial to what an editor does. A really good exercise to start to study editing, pacing, and how that really affects the end product is to take a scene from your favorite movie and like find a clip on YouTube or something like that and download that, bring it into an editing program. So you have that scene and immediately take out the audio. So you just have the picture. Then with that clip in there, cut every single time the camera cuts. So you're matching the editor's edits. And once you have that scene completely re-edited, study that, figure out why did the editor cut where they did. Look at the eye lines of the characters and how it matches from shot to shot. Or how does one shot tell a story with the next shot? And study that. You'll, you'll learn quite a lot from doing that, surprisingly. I did it with um, quite a few scenes from Hitchcock films, like Psycho, Vertigo, Rear Window. And they're great to learn great pacing and tension and stuff like that. So I highly recommend you do that exercise when you have time. And 
piggybacking off of the idea of storytelling, I want to talk about a little bit of editing theory. And that editing theory is something called the Kuleshov effect. So this guy over here that you see on the right, that is Lev Kuleshov, who was a Soviet filmmaker back in the early 1900s. And he discovered something that he effectively named the Kuleshov effect, which basically he did this test where he put two pieces of footage, one shot and another shot, and just edited them straight together, just like that in sequence. And he showed it to a bunch of people. And he found out that viewers derive more meaning from the interaction of two shots than from a single shot in isolation. So basically he was trying to prove that, that film had a better storytelling capability than just a photo. Because suddenly when you put two objects or two shots comparative to each other, people derive meaning from those two shots in sequence. So basically he created a series of very, very short films. There were just two shots and he showed it to a lot of people and he asked them what emotion is the character feeling in this film? And you'll find something really, really interesting. So on the next slide, I have one of Kuleshov's films and in chat, I want you guys to tell me what emotion is the main character, this man feeling. So here's the first film. We have a shot of a man and we have a shot of some soup. What emotion is this guy feeling? You guys could throw that in chat for me. Hungry, pensive, distaste, hunger. Okay, cool. Great. Lonely. Awesome. Seen a lot of hungries. Yep. Cool. Depressed. <laughs> Cool. Dis dissatisfied with the soup. All right, cool. Now we have another film. Now the man is looking at a dead girl in a coffin. What's his emotion? What's he feeling? Numb. Grief. Good. Concern. Sadness. Nothing. Sorrow. Sad. Curious. Awesome. These are all great answers. So the wild thing is that is the same exact shot of the man. Nothing has changed. The only thing that changed is what he's looking at or that other shot that's cut in. And this is the essence of the Kuleshov effect. Basically, when you juxtapose two images side by side, the audience starts to kind of fill in the gaps and assign emotions, assign a story to what's going on, which is kind of wild. So knowing this, you can use this in your editing to help tell stories or also subvert expectations. Um, and it's something just to be conscious of as you're working, especially with the exercise I'm giving you today. It's just a bunch of stock footage that really wasn't shot in the same pizzeria, but by editing it all together in a certain way, you can make the audience believe that, yeah, this is all goes together. This is a story of one place, um, which is kind of cool. So definitely something to think about as you edit and how you can kind of create those emotions by just juxtaposing images together. So with that being said, that is the end of our introductory lecture. And we're gonna switch over to Adobe Premiere Rush and I'm gonna show you guys how to use that program. Before we jump in, um, if anyone has any questions, please throw them in chat or throw them in the q and I'd be happy to answer any of them, um, but I can also swap over to Rush. I'm gonna stop my share for right now. Um, do you have anything in Q&A? Nope, we're good. Cool. Um, so also in chat, can I see how many people have Adobe Rush and are interested in, in learning a bit about the program? If we could see anyone who has it. I have Adobe app. Awesome. Cool, cool, cool. 
interested in learning about the program and footage downloaded. Awesome. I see Maria, you have your hand raised. Some has Premiere Pro. You've rushed before. I have it, but I'm more experienced with Premiere. How does it compare? Will I be discussed? Okay. So um, Premiere Pro. All right. Um, you can use your refresher. Sweet. Do people people made fill production editing? Okay. Um, just only definitely interested. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Okay, cool. So let me go through you with Avid. Chat's going fast. Okay, <laughs> let me let me scroll up here and answer some of these questions. So um, Tyler, you said you have Adobe Premiere Rush, but you're curious how it compares with Premiere. So Adobe Premiere Rush is just a very stripped down version of Premiere Pro. And it's just kind of for very streamlined short edits. Um, it also is available on iOS and Android. So if you wanna edit stuff on the go, it's great. Um, and I think it's just a nice tool to, to know if you're doing just quick little edits where you don't need you know, massive stuff with, uh, with Premiere Pro. Um, someone else is asking, will you be discussing Final Cut Pro? I will not be discussing Final Cut Pro today um, also because in industry, it's not really used that much anymore. Like I said, Avid Media Composer and Adobe Premiere Pro are more so industry standards. Um, so I will not be discussing Final Cut Pro. Um, people, I think, is this is Nicole. I think, do people double major in film production and editing? Um, double major, you can. Um, more so people will do major and minor. So you could definitely like major in film production with a minor in editing. Um, that's definitely something that you can do at a variety of schools. Um, do, 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 do. Interested in learning Premiere, I have Final Cut Pro. Um, is After Effects used at all in the industry? Yes, After Effects is used quite a lot, um, specifically in motion graphics. Um, so whenever you see text on screen, um, for commercials, films, that kind of stuff. After Effects is heavily used um, for all that kind of stuff. Also, um, Cinema 4D is in conjunction with After Effects. If you own After Effects, you can also um, get the light version of Cin Cinema 4D, which is a 3D program that's heavily used for 3D type um, in any thing that you see online, in film, in TV. Um, those are used in conjunction quite a lot. So without further ado, let's jump in to Adobe Rush. So I'm going to walk you guys through um, just the interface, how to use it. Seems like some, a lot of you guys have at least edited something before. So you're familiar with, you know, an editing interface, um, which is great. So let's see here. Um, where are my notes here? So we are going to do an editing exercise in Rush with those assets I had you guys download. Um, but let's just kind of talk about you're given an editing project. What's your step number one? Your step number one should always be managing your footage. And that can mean a lot of things. So let's say you had a shoot and they shot with a really nice expensive red camera that was shooting in 8k if you're having footage that that's big you're probably your first step is going to be creating proxies which a proxy what is a proxy so 8k footage that's huge right and if your computer is not that beefy not that up to date it's going to have a hard time playing back that footage in real time so in order for your computer to handle that footage to play it back quickly you're going to create something called a proxy where basically you downsize that footage, you crunch it so it's a much smaller size in both resolution and also just file size so your computer can play it quicker. Um, so you can crunch 8K down to like 1920 by 1080, let's say, and your computer's gonna have a much easier time processing that so you can edit quicker. And then when you're ready to deliver the final product, you swap your proxies with your master footage or your high res footage and then you could deliver in 8K or whatever your final specs are gonna be. But that's something you have to consider when you start your edit is look at your footage. What are you working with? How big is that footage? Is your computer gonna be able to handle that footage? Um, 
and then next, after you figure that out, it's what do I have? What did they shoot? What is all of this? So take the time to organize your footage. So, you know, you have it off your, you got it off the SD card, you have it on a hard drive. You're going to import all that into your editing program of choice. And now you begin the tagging process, which basically is go through every single shot and start to rename shots. Probably my favorite method is to first denote the side, the type of shot. So is it a wide shot, close up, medium shot, zoom shot, dolly shot? And then like, what's the subject? Is it, you know, guy holding pop can? Is it, you know, woman screaming? You know, just kind of do that. So it's like, you know, tag it like wide man in restaurant or, you know, close up woman screaming, you know, that kind of stuff. So you know then at a glance what you're working with. So that'll just speed up your editing process later on. So when you're editing and you're like, oh God, I really need a shot of like the guy in the restaurant, but I need a wide shot. So you're just going to scroll through your media bin and be like, oh great, I already tagged it. Instead of having, you know, hundreds of files that are just random letters and numbers, and it's just going to take you forever to find what you want. Um, so in, in editing programs like Premiere and Avid and stuff like that, you can rename your footage, organize it into bins, which I highly recommend you do before you even start even thinking about editing, do all of that. Um, but in programs like Adobe Rush, which are a bit smaller and less convoluted, it doesn't allow you to rename footage inside the program or create bins. So if you're working with Rush, I recommend that you organize all your footage and rename all your stuff outside of the program in your file explorer. Do that step first before you bring the stuff into Rush. Luckily for you guys, for all the footage that I gave you, I did all that process. So you'll, you'll see that the shots are renamed with the type of shot they are, and then a brief description of what's in the frame, um, which will help you as you edit. So you kind of know already a glance what's, what's going on in each of those shots. Because um, I could show you here, if I uh, hit screen share and go here, Oop, that is my desktop. Uh, this. So this is basically what the footage looked like when I downloaded it. And the names aren't helping me whatsoever. But when I rename all the footage to how I did, where it's like, oh, close up, cooked cheese pizza. It's like, okay, now I know what that is, not just this random jumble of letters and numbers. So that's always something to consider um, when you're starting a project. So with that being said, that's your major first step. And in the industry, that whole job is basically the job of assistant editor. So when you're working by yourself, you got to be your own assistant editor and you got to do that kind of work to set you up for success later on. And that's, I think, the most important thing. I know it's really tempting. It's like, oh, I just got this great shot shoot and the shoot went so well. And I'm so excited to finally see my product all edited up. When you like want to start it right away, don't manage your media, think about how you're going to set yourself up for success later on down the line, which is doing all this kind of stuff. So that being said, um, okay, I got a Q&A before we jump into Premiere uh, Rush. So how does one create a proxy? Is there a feature in Premiere Pro Rush or does it require a separate app? So to create a proxy, um, usually, the standard is to use Adobe Media Encoder, which is a, another program within the Adobe Creative Suite. And that allows you to like throw a bunch of footage into the program at once. And then in mass choose like what you wanna downsize the footage to and then just let it run. And it's a lot quicker. But that being said, you can also do it in Premiere um, if you wanted to, like you could basically create a sequence that's much smaller, let's say you had that 8K footage, but you wanted to down res it to, to 2K, you can create a 2K sequence and just like in mass export the footage, but then you'd have to do that like manually clip by clip, which will take a while. Um, but Adobe Media Encoder is basically the number one thing to use for creating proxies. And then Premiere has its own proxy workflow that you can set up where basically you tell it like, you import your proxies, also you import your full res footage. And basically it's like you tell Premiere, like I wanna work on the proxies. So it's only dedicating your computer power to those proxies. 
And then when it's time to deliver, you basically tell Premiere, hey, switch all of that back to the master footage, to that 8K footage. And it'll just do that automatically. And it's great. <laughs> and it saves you a lot of time. Um, and there's a lot of workflows and, and tutorial videos and stuff that can teach you that workflow. Um, but if you're shooting stuff in like, you know, 1080, even 2K, and you have a new computer, you'll be fine. You don't need to worry about this whole workflow. Um, but it's just when you get into bigger, higher end productions with better cameras that you're going to start have to thinking, so have to start thinking about that kind of stuff um, before you, uh, you start your project. Um, awesome. Great question. So without further ado, let us jump in to Adobe Premiere Rush. Let me share my screen again and go to screen one and hit share. Cool. So when you open Adobe Premiere Rush, it's going to look like this. Um, and you want to create a new project. So you're going to click this blue button in the upper left. And it's going to bring you to this screen. So basically, you're telling the program, one, where do you want to save your file, your project file? And two, where is all of the assets or, or all the media that you're going to be using? So down here in the bottom left, you're going to title this project. I'm going to call it edit workshop project, because that's what we're working on today. And I have a little folder on my desktop that's called post-production workshop. So I'm going to save it here. And also, I see something in chat. Um, um, so then you are going to, once you name your project, you're going to navigate over to where all of your media is. So for me, it's in this workshop asset folder. And you're basically going just to click and drag a bounding box over all the footage. And you know it's selected once it gives you these like numbers. So I selected all of my video footage. And then I'm going to go back, select all my graphics, and then select my music track. And when you do all of that, you should see 26 assets selected. And if that's done and true, then you're gonna go over here to the bottom right and you're gonna hit create. What that's gonna do is going to import all of that media and set you up a brand new project for Adobe Premiere Rush. And that's gonna think for a little bit. And once that thinks, um, it's gonna bring you here. Um, into your new project. So like I said before, Adobe Rush is a very much simplified version of Adobe Premiere Pro, but it's still a very powerful tool and it's also 100% free, which is great um, if you don't want to pay for Premiere or any of that kind of stuff. So, still good. Here. Sorry. All right. My computer is freaking out for a second. All right. We're good. So when you start your project in Rush, it automatically populates a sequence, which is down here with all of your imported media, which is fine and dandy, but we want to edit from scratch. So what we're going to do is just click and drag a bounding box over everything and delete it with your delete key. So we have a fresh empty timeline. Um, and speaking of this timeline, basically you'll see, you know, all of your seconds down here for the duration of your timeline, this blue thing is called your playhead, click and drag it to scrub throughout your timeline. If you want to zoom into your timeline, you can use the minus and plus keys on your keyboard to zoom in and out of your timeline. Um, so where's all our project assets you might be asking? Well, over here on the left-hand side, you'll see this little bin. If you click that, it's gonna show us all of our project assets. And we can see all the media that we've imported when we started this project. 
if you want to filter your media, let's say I only want to look at the video clips or I only want to look at my audio, um, you can do that by this little cone filter right here. If you click on that, you can say, oh, I only want to look at video only. So it's going to filter only your video clips. Or I only want to see audio. It's going to have our music track. Or images. It's going to have our logos for the pizzeria. Um, but we're going to switch this back to all media types so we can see everything. So if you want to trim a clip before you put it in your timeline, let's say this shot here, the, the close-up pizza shot, it's 13 seconds long, but let's say I only want to use, you know, two or three seconds of it. You could trim it before you drag it and drop it into your timeline. And to do so, you're going to click these three little buttons down here, and you're going to click open. And this will bring you to this preview window. Here you can play your clip and see what it looks like, but also you can trim it. Down here with these yellow handles, you can click and drag this. So you can select the portion of your clip that you want to use. Or if you're playing the clip up here, you can pause it and then press I and O on your keyboard. I for in point, O for out point, and you can select that duration of the clip. So let's say I wanted you know, this part in, that part out. So I have this little three second clip is that I'm happy with that then you could just click and drag that into your timeline. And there you have it. And then to get back to all your media, all you do is click this little back to grid view button up top there, and then you're back and working. Um, you can add clips to your timeline sequence by either doing what I did before where you click and drag that, or if you have something selected, you can click this little add button down here and it'll add that clip basically wherever your playhead is. Um, so there is that. So speaking of the timeline down here, um, let me let me bring in some clips here so we have some media to work with and look at. All right, so the timeline is down here. You can adjust the clip's length in the timeline by clicking and dragging on these yellow handles, um, just like that. And let's say, you know, this, this shot of the guy throwing the pizza dough, you're like, oh, you know, I want to cut the clip right there. Instead of clicking and dragging the handles of the clip, you can splice clips with this little scissor tool over here. You can just click that and it will cut your clip wherever your playhead is. Or if you want to use a keyboard shortcut, you just hit S on your keyboard and it will split the clip wherever your playhead is. One thing that I could recommend is that you learn the keyboard shortcuts for whatever editing program you use, your editing program of choice. Learning the keyboard shortcuts just quickens your process, your editing process, and it'll just save you a lot of time. So get comfortable with keyboard shortcuts. Um, so, this is like the way that the timeline is looking now is our simplified view. But if we want to make this timeline look a little bit more like it does in Premiere Pro or in other editing programs, what you want to do is in the very, very bottom left hand corner, you'll see this control tracks button. We're going to click that. And that way we can see more at ease what's going on. So all of these tracks up top are your video tracks. And you can, you know, turn, click this eye to hide or show the tracks. You can um, also lock the track if you don't want anything to be affected on that track. And then below that is all of your audio tracks. So let's say, because we want to use this music later on, just click and drag that music track in. So we have that there. Um, so there's that. If you want to quickly navigate through your clips on the timeline, you can use the up and down arrow keys to quickly jump to and from all of your clips, which is super nice. Um, spacebar plays your edit, um, as do the controls here and the viewer. Um, does also a handy um, handy keyboard shortcut to always know is um, also works in Premiere. 
your uh, keyboard keys J, K, and L. Very handy thing to know. K is always going to be player or L is always going to be play forward. K is going to be pause, and J is going to be play backwards. Handy things to always keep in mind. Um, so before we move on to the effects panel and talk about that kind of stuff, I'm going to pause here um, for any questions that you guys have. How are we feeling? What are you thinking? Um, do you have any questions? So far, so good. Caleb, awesome. Great to hear. Um, anyone have any questions about Premiere Rush? Anything that you want me to go back over? Anything that's confusing? Um, do we have to know? We have to know to save, um, like to save your project. I think, I think Adobe Rush auto saves. Um, oh, like emergency save. I'm pretty sure it auto saves. Um, because I don't even see like a saving option in the program. I'm pretty sure it just auto saves every few minutes um, to prevent crash, yeah. Can you go, okay, so Tyler has a question here. Um, can you go over how to open the media to set in and out points? Sure thing. Let me share my screen again and let me go over that. So, back in Adobe Rush. So your question is, can we go over how to open the media and set in and out points? Yes. So let's say we want to use this shot of these customers enjoying their pizza, but it's a 12 second shot and we only want a few seconds of it. We don't wanna drag that whole 12 second shot into our timeline like that. So in order to trim it, you're going to click on these three little dots in the bottom corner of the clip, and you're gonna click open. Once you do that, it'll bring it to this preview window where you can play the clip and preview what you want. So let's say I want, I want that part right there where the girl bites the pizza, takes a bite of the pizza. So what you can do is you can either click and drag the handles of the clip to the parts where you want the clip, like where you want it selected. So it's only gonna be in this little highlighted area. Or if you don't wanna click and drag handles, you could also use keyboard shortcut I on your keyboard to set an in point and then keyboard shortcut O to set an out point. And with that selected, then you can just click and drag that clip into your timeline. And there you go. So I'm gonna stop my share here. Um, hopefully that answers your question, Tyler. If not, let me know. Um, Tyler also says, do you have to use the three dots or is there a shortcut to open? Um, that's a great question. I don't, I don't know if there's a shortcut. Because usually if there's a shortcut, it um, will say like the little keyboard command next to the item. Because it does that like when you hover over any tool, it'll give you the tool tip and then the keyboard shortcut. Um, but I don't think it does. I don't think there's a shortcut. Um, are there ways to create markers on shots and audio like in Final Cut? I do not believe we can create markers in Adobe Premiere Rush because like I said before, it's a very stripped down version of Premiere Pro. So you're not gonna be editing your, your master feature in this program. It's more so for quick little edits that you wanna do. Um, no, I am not sharing my screen at the moment. Um, I just wanted to stop sharing to, to talk with you guys for a bit, check in, see how we're feeling. Um, is there, are we, okay, I think I addressed everything. How are we feeling? Are we good? Do we wanna continue? Is there any other lingering things that we wanna address before we continue talking about effects in 
for your rush. Um, this is really unrelated, but uh, would you recommend Adobe Rush instead of a program such as Microsoft ClipChamp, since I want to know if it would be worth it if I were to use Rush as my main editing software? I think Adobe Premiere Rush is probably a bit better of a program than ClipChamp, um, just because it gets you in the headspace and mindset of like Adobe Premiere Pro and um, gives you a lot more, I think, creativity in, in uh, you know, customize your effects and stuff like that. Because like when I talk in a second here about the effects panel and all the stuff that you can use and all the templates available to you, I think it's a really great program to, to edit with. Um, and also, like I said, it just kind of gets you in that mindset. So when, if and when you ever then move up to Premiere Pro or work with Premiere Pro in your career, you're a bit more accustomed to the layout of like Adobe products and how it all works and what things are called, where things are located, um, that kind of stuff. But yeah, I'd recommend it. And it's also available on your phone. So that's also awesome too, that you can edit stuff on the go. And I think they even have like cloud savings. So it's like, if you're working on something on your computer, but then you want to also work on it on your phone, you could like do that, which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah. Uh, sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome, Caleb. Um, cool. So if you guys are feeling good, then let me share my screen again. And let's talk about the cool stuff, which is effects. Um, share my screen. Bring back Rush. Cool. So now that we're comfortable, we're getting more comfortable with the timeline, with how do you bring in assets, um, oh, also one thing, you know, like when you're getting to like the logo, when you like want to drag the logo on top of footage, you can have multiple video tracks, um, just by dragging something above. And of course the topmost video track is what's going to be seen. So think of it as a stack, whatever is on video layer one, it's going to be the very, very bottom. And then video layer two is going to be on top of that. Think of it like building like a snowman. So basically, biggest snowball at the bottom, then you keep going up, is your visibility. Um, so that being said, the effects panel. So over on the right-hand side of Adobe Rush, you're going to see all of these little icons. And these are all of your different types of effects. Button number one with the little T is going to be your graphics. So if you want to add a, any type of graphic to your edit, you're going to hit this little uh, plus button that says add graphics. And it's going to give you a bunch of pre-made templates that you can use for titles, transitions, overlays, a bunch of stuff. Um, I think I might, mine look, might look a little bit different than yours because I'm subscribed to the Creative Cloud. So I might have access to more stuff, but either way, it's going to look like this somewhat um and if like you know i want basic title like let's say i want to use this one you just click and drag that into your timeline it's gonna like load in that preset and it's gonna give you that title so you just click on it and say whatever you want like pizza um yummy so like that's my title and then in this effects panel you can click on the text and you could change to whatever font you want um, installed on your system. Um, and then also the color of the font, if you want an outline to the font, shadow, all this stuff. So each, each line of text you can customize here. Um, so that's basically this top graphics or text uh, panel. Number two is going to be your effects effects panel, which is basically your transitions. So if you want to add a dissolve or a dip to black or white or any of these effects to your clips, your transitions to your clips, what you're going to do, so let's say like from shot one to shot two, I want to dissolve. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to click on the transition you want, and it will, will either apply it directly to the clip that you have highlighted with your uh, playhead, or you can click and drag it to the cut point that you want affected. So if I like click and drag this like dip to black right at the beginning here, 
it's going to start from black and fade up and then i'm going to mute my audio track uh and then like dissolve between those two clips and you could do it with any of these clips um any of these effects just click and drag if you want to change the duration of your uh transition you can click on that transition and then click and drag the handles on either side to make it longer. You can move it around to adjust that transition. You can also adjust the duration by having your transition selected. Then up in your transition uh, effects panel over here, you can click and drag this slider to change the duration of your transition. Um, so that's that uh, the third button here is your color tab and this allows you to color correct your footage um, they have a ton of pre-built um, presets that you can just uh, basically with any you know it, your your playheads over a clip and let's say you know what i really want this to be black and white just click the mono one and bam the color correction's there you want to customize your color correction you can click over to edit up here and here's where you can customize your color correction um, with however you want it um quick way of like blurring a clip if you want to blur it is just like adjust the sharpening down here to kind of get like a blurred look it's a little quick hack that you can do in rush because it doesn't really have um all of your blurring effects that you have in like premiere but a quick blur is just a lower the sharpening just like that um so it's basically the color tab number four over here this little speedometer is for the speed of your clip so this is where you can make stuff a lot quicker a lot slower or do these things called speed ramps so let's say this clip right here the one that it's like doing this pan dolly around the around this pizza here it's playing at 100 percent speed and we can see this here in the timeline this little pink thing this pink bar across the the clip it says 100 um if we want to increase that speed over here in the panel we can just click and drag this little thing this little dot and it'll increase the percentage of speed so if we increase it over 100 it's going to get faster if we decrease it below 100, it's going to slow down the clip. But let's say we wanted to play the clip at regular speed, but suddenly make it a lot faster in the middle. That's something called the speed ramp. And how to do that is you'll see on either end of your clip, there are these little blue uh, like speedometer things. You're going to click that and drag it to where you want the speed ramp to occur. So let's say I want to affect this part of the clip only and leave the other parts unaffected. I'm going to say uh, during that duration, I want to speed it up to like 200%. But also I want to ramp it, which ramping means that it's going to have a gradual change in speed. It's not just going to go, you know, oh, 100%, 100%, suddenly 200, 100%, 100%. We want it to like slowly ramp up and down. It's, it just creates better motion, better visuals. Um, stuff like that. So if we hit ramp and then we view this, it'll suddenly get really fast and then slow back down. You can see that effect even more if I turn this up to like, you know, let's do like 400%. Um, so it's like slow, extremely fast, and then back to slow. So slow, really, really fast, and then back down to slow. And that's a speed ramp, basically. And in editing, why would you use a speed ramp there's a lot of different methods different scenarios that you can use a speed ramp for sometimes you want to emphasize a motion of something um you know if you want you, let's say there's like a really slow cinematic pan around something but then you want to like emphasize some like hit in the music so you want to have that super slow-mo footage suddenly go super fast to match that like change in the music or you know, you're doing some action scene and you want like, you know, it's like a fight scene. Suddenly you want the footage to suddenly go from, you know, real time to slow-mo as like a punch is landing on somebody. That's all different types of, of uses for speed ramps. You can, you know, creatively think like, how is speed going to affect my story? 
how is speed going to emphasize a moment in time with you know the the story that i'm telling the footage that's showing the music that's playing think about that um then the next tab over here after speed is for audio um and audio basically i think they they have this whole library where you can bring in music and sound effects and stuff like that i provided you guys with music you don't have to worry about that but basically if you wanted to change the volume of your clip or anything like that um this is where you do it um and then lastly this little like crop box looking thing is your transform tab so this is where if you have a piece of footage selected you can change the position of the clip horizontally horizontally vertically you could rotate your clip you could change the opacity of it um also scale it up or down crop it if you so desire um, feather the edges if you so desire all that jazz um so yeah before i move on to how do we export i'm going to stop here again um for any questions that you guys have how we feeling about all the effects and stuff like that got them down awesome to hear no questions good awesome 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 feeling gucci love to hear it good stuff good stuff awesome um if i don't get all my clips in the country Downsize graphics. Okay. So if I don't get all my clips in the project, how can I add more? Okay. So let's say when you create the project, you didn't import everything at once. Um, we can address that. Let me share my screen again. Um, so we're in Rush and we realized, oh shoot, we forgot to import the graphics. So if you open up your file explorer on your computer, whether you're on Windows or Mac, um, and have that open, and then just click and drag that media into the into the Premiere Rush window, I'm pretty sure that'll import it. But I think because I already have a copy of it, it won't do that. Um, let me delete. Delete that. I think also if clicking and dragging doesn't work, my there we go. Yeah. So basically, yeah, you could click and drag from the file explorer into the program. Um, if you don't want to do that, up in the upper left, you'll see this little add media button. And you can say, I want to add your media. And you can navigate here um, to wherever your media is and then select it and then hit add um which i bring stuff in hopefully that helps let me know if you can get to work it um down is there any way to turn on clipping for the shots what do you mean by clipping um if you could clarify arthur um Ray is asking for downsizing graphics. Okay, so let's say you you imported one of those uh, graphics templates um, and it's way too big for what you're looking for. What you're gonna do, let me share my screen again. Um, what you're gonna do, so let's say when I wrote my graphics here, I wrote pizza yummy, um, but it's I don't like the size of it. What you're gonna do, you're going to have that graphic selected and you're going to go over to that transform tab, which is all the way here at the bottom. And you're going to go over here to scale. And if you click and drag that, you can adjust the scale of that graphic, however you want. You can go all the way down to 1% or 200%. That's how you can adjust the size and then also your position over here in the scale tab. Um, So hopefully that helps for your downsizing of the graphics. Um, Arthur said the shot lighting up automatically. Oh, uh, okay. So you mean like snapping of clips in the timeline? Okay. Um, 
I think the shot's lining up automatically at the start end of another shot rather than having to line the frames up exactly yourself. So I think like the magnetic snapping of uh, Adobe Rush is just how the program works. Like you can't like drag a clip. Let me sh- let me show my screen again. Um, Cause unlike, uh, like unlike Premiere or something, like if you're working and you're like, you know what? I don't really know what I want to do with this clip. I just want to like drag it over here, not think about it. You can't do that. It just like snaps because everything's very magnetic in this program. So I, I don't believe there's a way to turn that off, but I mean, you could still like, you know, get in here frame by frame and like, you know, trim stuff by like dragging the handles or like I said before, using that keyboard shortcut S to cut things um, and do it that way to get frame perfect. Um, Can you animate with keyframes like in Premiere? Um, uh, Sweet thing, okay, glad to answer your question, Arthur. Um, Tyler, can you animate with keyframes? I do not remember if this allows you to, because like I, because it's basic, I don't think it allows you to, Um, because even if like, unless it auto keyframes, let me test something. If I like move the shot over here, but then move it back. It doesn't animate that, does it? No, it doesn't. I don't, yeah, I don't believe this allows you to animate stuff. I think the the biggest thing you're gonna get is like using these transitions um, to like slide stuff and push stuff up and down. But, cause like I said before, this is a very stripped down version of Premiere. I don't think it's going to allow you to do uh, keyframe animation, sadly. Um, cool. How we feeling, chat? We feeling good? We happy? Feeling feeling creative? Feeling good? Awesome. Doing great. Love to hear it. Sweet. So, yes, great. Love to hear it. Good, good stuff, guys. Having fun. So. Next, I am going to show you guys how to export your project. Um, And then we're gonna talk about our editing exercise for today. So let me share my screen. Um, So let's say for whatever reason, I'm really happy with this edit and I wanna export it and show it to the world. So to do that, all you're gonna do is up in the upper left, you're gonna see like this little home button, the edit button, and then this thing that says share. You're gonna click on share. And that's gonna bring you to your export screen. So destination, you wanna set it to local because you wanna export it to your system, to your computer. And you're gonna name it. I'm just gonna call this edit test. And you can click save to and tell it where you want it to save or export your your video to. So I have this post-production workshop folder. That's where I want it. It's gonna tell your estimated file size. It's gonna be probably pretty small because this is 720 footage and it's only gonna be 15 seconds long. So you're looking at pretty small files, which is good. Um, All these advanced settings, you don't really need to worry about. Um, It's automatic settings is going to just kind of Basically, Rush is going to analyze what footage you're working with and what's the best settings for that footage. You could trust it um, for what we're doing for today. And then with all of that, you know, renamed, you've told it where you want it to save. You're going to go to your bottom right and you're going to click export. And it's going to render. It's going to be pretty quick because, like I said, it's pretty short. And then with that done, you're going to click done. And then wherever you told it to export, it's going to be there. I think I put it here. Exactly. So it says edit test. So that's your file. Um, That's how you export it. So with that being said, that now you guys learning a bit more about Adobe Rush, how it works, um, all the ins and outs. 
we are going to do an edit exercise. So with all of that practice media I had you guys download and bring into Adobe Rush, we are going to be editing a 15 second commercial for Joe's Pizzeria. So using all of this stock footage I gave you, the music track and the graphics provided, I want you guys to create a 15 second commercial for Joe's Pizzeria. While editing, I want you guys to think of what kind of story can you create with the footage provided? How can the music drive your edit? What clips would make potential customers excited to try this restaurant's pizza? And how can you use speed ramps to emphasize certain moments of the commercial? Also think of the Kuleshov effect that we talked about today. And how can clips in a sequence tell a story, create emotion, um, make the audience think something, feel something, maybe feel hungry. Um, but the edit does have a few requirements. I want you guys to have at least 10 cuts in this 15 second commercial, use at least one speed ramped clip to emphasize some motion and use at least one transition. Um, I also wanna see that pizzeria logo at the end of the commercial with a graphic uh, of text that has the, the, the copy dine in or pick up today. Um, and you guys are basically, we have like 50 minutes for you guys to work. Also ask questions. I'm here to help um, ask questions about this project, ask questions about post-production in general or whatever's on your mind. I'm happy to talk. Um, and when you guys finish your edit today, you don't have to finish it within the workshop time. You can work on this on your own time, but if you want to shoot me an email with your finished edit. I'd love to take a look and give you guys feedback. You could email it to my Emmy email here. Um, I'll put also put this email in chat for you guys to copy and paste. Um, but yeah, I just basically want to answer any questions you guys have. Also set you loose to edit. Um, and I'll be here to help you guys talk through things. Um, if anyone wants to share their screen as they're working, I can promote you guys to I think like put you on stage to talk um, if you want to do anything. But yeah, let me know how you guys are feeling. I'll also put my email in chat. Can you also put the requirements in chat? Sure thing. I have it in a PDF file. If that works for you guys, I will, wherever that is, workshop assets. Here it is. Um, I am going to drop a PDF file in chat. Um, and that is the requirements for the edit. Um, So only render at the end when you share, or can you render in a mentally while working on the edit? Okay, so you're saying like pre-render it as you're working. Um, I don't think that Rush can like pre-render like Adobe does um, as you're working to like render the effects. But then again, anything you're doing in Rush isn't going to be graphics card intensive that you need that pre-render for stuff to play and to work. Um, so that that render export that we did at the end is basically the one that just sends your project, your timeline out of the program, renders all effects and fakes everything in. So that's about the only time that you have to worry about rendering anything. Um, but yeah, that's how it works. Um, I see a question from Ray. What got you interested in storytelling? That's a really good question. Um, huh, what got me interested in storytelling? I feel like ever since I was young, I was a very creative kid. I always like to, to play, pretend, create with stories. Um, I'm also a writer. I, I write short stories and novels and stuff like that. Um, so I've always just had an interest in, in telling a story. And I think editing kind of mixed my love for storytelling with also very technical work. Um, and kind of all that back end of understanding, you know, not only programs, but also like the stuff that goes into like, what is a video file and footage and 
the science of color and spaces and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I feel like editing kind of like married all those things that I'm really into. Um, and just being able to like craft a story that makes someone feel something, I think is what, what drives me to continue to edit and continue to make stuff. Um, Cause it's just like the idea that I can kind of formulate um, an emotion for somebody to experience, which is really cool that you could transport people to, to spaces and to make things happen. But yeah. Um, if anyone else has any other questions, happy to answer them. Like I said, in general or about Rush. Uh, where did I intern? Um, so I, when I went to uh, DePaul University, my junior year of college, I interned at then the place that I ended up working, which was Weigel Productions. I was their uh, basically like post-production intern. I worked closely with their editing team and their motion graphics team, which is awesome because they actually let me like touch footage, work on stuff. Um, and I ended up editing a, a short like minute documentary piece that ended up airing on national TV, which was awesome. Uh, and then also worked on like a two or three minute uh, animation um, that also ended up on, on TV for their Through the Decades Network, which was sweet. Um, and I learned a lot by being able to shadow the artists working there and working alongside them, you know, making a project and then showing it to them like, you know, twice a week and getting their feedback and kind of learning how professionals look at content and what they look for and what makes, you know, a, a spot or like a, or a piece really shine. Um, so Weigel was a, it was a great internship because then I ended up getting hired then after graduation because they knew my work, they knew my work ethic, um, which is sweet, which is also always a thing to consider is like where you intern also kind of opens that door for maybe where your first job's going to be. Um, I also interned for a professor at DePaul. I was, he, he was a, he's a editor and documentary uh, creator. And I worked for him um, editing some stuff for his documentaries, doing some research for him, um, which was also a really awesome experience learning the world of documentary. Um, cause, cause the fun thing about editing is like, you can learn the skills, you know, the program, you know how to edit, but depending on the genre, the editing styles and techniques that you use is vastly different, which is really cool because the skills that like a like a horror movie editor uses is so different from like a documentarian or a news editor. Um, so it's like, there's just so many things to learn and skills to pick up on. Um, each entry level job is a collection of skills. Yeah. Um, Exactly. Um, so I also saw a question, uh, what does a day of work for your current company look like? So currently I work as my official title is a flame assistant because the program we use is called flame um, at carbon. And basically I am on the visual effects team now. So we day to day, uh, we work on different projects for um, a multitude of commercials. So like I just did a spot a few weeks ago for, for Red Lobster. So like every day is just kind of coming in, looking at what the client wants, what are their notes, how are we going to tackle their request of like certain type of cleanup work or whatever they're requesting to manipulate the footage in a way that they're gonna like it and to also make it seamless because the way the visual effects I do is not your flashy putting a monster into the film type thing. It's the invis uh, invisible visual effects. So it's the art of being invisible. It's we're manipulating footage to make it look the best it possibly can be, but also completely natural. So when viewers see it, they don't think anything's been done with to it. Um, so day to day, we're just like working on um, that kind of stuff and just continual notes, continual feedback always on deadline, trying to get stuff at the door because these commercials turn quick. I mean, sometimes I'm working on commercials that start and end, it's less than a week, um, which is crazy. <laughs> so it's really fast paced. Uh, so all those, those six main skills that I talked about, organization, timeliness, all that stuff, 
majorly comes into play um, when you're working in the industry. Um, so what jobs, internships in the area do you recommend for a high school student to get more experience? Specifically, I'm more interested in working in, po in production and on set as opposed to post, but anything that would be get me into filmmaking experience would help. That is a great question. Um, so, um, more production on set. Um, I feel because I my my wheelhouse is more in in the post production world, um, but I feel with anything in film, it's important to just make stuff, whether that's you and your friends making stuff. Um, it's just to get that experience uh, on your own. And if you want to go to local companies and stuff like that online, if you just search like, because especially for, for your entry level, you're going to be like a, basically like a production assistant on set, um, which is kind of like a, a version of that, that runner uh, position in post um, where you're on set helping and doing you know, whatever the, the, the company needs, the set team needs um, to get the shoot done. I don't know in particular specific companies, um, but if you look for those like production assistant positions or internships, um, that's definitely somewhere you could start looking. Um, also, if you know anybody, any friends or like brothers or sisters of friends that are in like film, like film school, college, like college kids that are working on films are always looking for another set of hands to help on set. Um, so that could also be a great opportunity to like get on set of local productions um, and help out some, some aspiring filmmakers. Um, that could be super cool. But I feel like at the end of the day, best thing you can do for yourself is make stuff and then put it out there and let people critique it. Um, Cause that's how you're gonna learn. You're just gonna learn by doing, I think, but hopefully. That someone helps you, Tyler. Um, so that being said, now that you guys have been turned loose to editing for a bit, um, if anyone wants to share what they've edited so far, I can allow you to um, share your screen and kind of show, walk us through what you're doing or if you have questions with the program or anything um, or want suggestions or want to talk more about like editing theory, um, please let me know. I would be happy to see what you're working on. We could talk through it. Do I teach classes? <laughs> no, I don't, sadly, but maybe I should. It would be fun. Um, I just, um, I sometimes go to, to high schools and teach like day workshops, which are super fun um, with, uh, I, I attended South Elgin High School and their Beacon Academy, which is a film and TV uh, academy. And I've gone back for several years and taught like one or two day workshops um, with visual effects and animation and, and editing and stuff like that, which is super fun. Um, but if you guys, uh, I guess, want more of this type of content, want me to teach you guys something else, um, different program, different skill set, let me know. You can send me an email um, and I'd be happy to, to host another one of these guys, <laughs> these uh, to teach you guys. Or like I said, with that email, you could always just shoot me questions if you want to talk anything post-production. Another um, great thing to do is basically how I set up this class is there is a, a website called Pexels, P-E-X-E-L, I'm pretty sure. And it's, it's a free stock footage site 
they have hundreds of thousands of pieces of stock footage that you could download for free. Um, and I'd recommend if you just want to like do an e editing exercise such as this one, just download a bunch of footage and cut something together. Like a, maybe create a fake commercial for some restaurant, vacation, whatever. Um, could just be a very fun exercise just to, to test your skills um, and to create something new. Um, when you're starting out, I feel like focusing on the importance of a cut and for focusing on understanding pacing and how do you create emotion through edits, I think is the most important thing you can learn um, instead of like flashy transitions or something like that. The cool, the cool effects are gonna make you a good editor. Understanding pacing is gonna make you a good editor. Um, so, yeah. They're gonna have to man. Is there, so Caleb, you have a good question. Is there a good enough demand for video editors? Um, like from your experience, is it a viable career option for someone like me that wants a creative and technical job? It's a very good question. Um, and I think, yes, I mean, considering, think of all the content that's being created today. Think of all of the streaming platforms. Think of all of your social media platforms that have content creators, that have editors. Um, Think of any news channel, any documentary that's being made, any commercial that you see, um, any any advertisement, any anything. There's an editor somewhere in that pipeline to create all that kind of content. And I feel like ever since the pandemic, there's just been like a boom of, of content um, in, in need of teams. Um, so I think it is a viable career, but also it's not an easy or quick career. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort takes a lot of patience, a lot of no's before you get that yes. Um, but if you're super dedicated to your career, if you know that this is the ultimate thing you want to do and you're going to do whatever it takes to be the best you possibly can at that, really hone your craft, become an artist, um, it's viable and you could definitely do it. You just need to have that passion and drive to stick with it and to um, kind of like find your footing. I feel like your biggest thing is going to be networking. Um, so you know, if you, if you attend college, network with your professors, get to know people, get to, you know, befriend the, the students who are directing majors. So you could maybe, you know, edit their, their films, their music videos, whatever they're doing, um, you know, and just build, build your network, um, which will set you up for success. Um, so Noah is asking, uh, what would you recommend to do to learn more about filmmaking and editing as a high school student? Um, there is a lot. If you wanna really do a deep dive on editing, I could recommend you a book, um, In a Blink of an Eye by Walter Murch, who is a historical classical editor. Um, it's a fantastic book about the power of editing and the power of a cut in understanding basically edi editing theory. Um, so In a Blink of an Eye is a great book. I, I would highly recommend to just learn about editing. Um, to learn more about filmmaking, I mean, there's, I feel like there is a lot of content on, on YouTube that just talks about in general filmmaking. I, I don't know if you wanna learn like about cameras or about what do you do on set um, or about how do you write a script? I mean, there's, there's so many aspects of filmmaking and I feel like you, you should first think about that wide picture of, of when you think of filmmaking, there's three, there's three core groups. It's your pre-production, your production, and your post. And think, well, what, what section interests me? Is, is it the post part that I wanna edit or I wanna do effects or music or sound design or graphics and animation? Is it that production middle chunk? I wanna be on set, I wanna to touch cameras, I wanna do lighting, electric. Or do you want to do that pre-production part where I want to be a producer, I want to scout locations, I want to find talent, I want to do casting, I want to do the budgeting. Like, think about what do you want to learn and then just start researching. Start finding tutorials, start finding articles. No Film School is a great website um, that has a ton of articles and how-tos on anything and everything. Um, but I think that's a place to start. Um, and also, yeah, I think this is like the two main, the main things that I would recommend for you, Noah. Um, Arthur asks, generally, 
would you recommend going to college for film or trying to jump straight into the industry? Um, I would recommend, from my experience, college, specifically the film program at DePaul that I could speak to, um, really, really helped me. Because um, yes, you can learn the program on your own, um, but I feel like the classes, at least at DePaul, really taught me the work ethic and the skills in a lot of like the technical minute details that you need to know to be, you know, a, a working professional in the post-production field. Because there's so much that goes into like the post-production pipeline that I feel like it's hard to learn on your own. Um, maybe you could learn it on the job, but I feel like the knowledge that you get from college, but also the networking, which is the, I think also the highest thing too, is that the, the connection that you build with professors, the connections that you build with fellow students will help you so much so in the long run. Um, I've gotten a ton of freelance gigs because of my professors and because of the people that they know. Um, so I think college is really instrumental in building that network. Because like the current job I have right now at Carbon uh, Visual Effects is because a DePaul professor recommended me to the company. So networking is huge. So I think that's the main benefit of college um, before jumping into the industry. Um, let's see, ask, how important are editing reels when applying to jobs? Is having a vast portfolio past experience better? So usually when you apply to any post-production job, besides like submitting your resume, they're always going to ask for your reel. And your reel is pretty important because it shows who you are as an artist, your style, your techniques. Um, and it's important. It's important to have that experience and to show in a very succinct, like minute long reel, everything you get to work with. Um, sometimes editing reels, if you're doing like more of a sequence or a scene reel, that could be like three minutes or so where you kind of let, if you, let's say you edit a bunch of short films and you let like the scene play out to show like how you edit dialogue or how you edit an action scene. Um, reels are important. And also having a website is also really, really important. So not only make that reel, but also have a website where then you showcase that reel, but then also you showcase the pieces in full of what you've worked on to show potential employers like, hey, you know, here's my reel. You could see little snippets of what I've done, but also like here's the whole short film that I worked on to showcase what I can do. Um, and here's like a bio about myself. So having a reel, having a website, really important assets to have, um, but also you need experience to have a reel. <laughs> you need experience to, to have, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I feel like those go hand in hand. Um, Tyler is asking, will the Emmys be hosting more of these workshops in the future or for other areas of film production as well? Where can I find info about upcoming events? Um, also, what film schools did you apply to and what made you choose to Paul? Great questions. Um, so the Emmy will be hosting more of these workshops in the future. So um, I'm part of the Emmy junior board and we, I constructed this post-production workshop, but there were talks to do workshops about um, pre-production and production. Um, and if you guys are interested in that, I definitely can tell my fellow board members to, to start uh, planning those out. Um, if you guys are interested in learning more about those, those facets of the film industry. Um, and if you want to find about other info, like other events coming up, we have, I think we have a, our website um, has events. There is an event page uh, somewhere. Let me find So that. if you go to the workshops page, you'll find stuff. And then also um, on upcoming workshops, and then if you also go to the media page, you'll find video of workshops that we have done in the past. Um, we did a two, two workshops called um, Majoring in Media, uh, College and Beyond, which were really informative workshops about what to look for when you're um, applying to colleges and the kind of programs. And we had people from Columbia, DePaul, uh, Loyola and Northwestern, Northwestern. Mm -hmm. on the calls. So we did those twice. Um, and the video of those workshops 
our uh, on our media page. So, and you can also send send me an email at Chicago Emmy at Gmail or put in my other email with if you have requests for other type of workshops. I'll put my cool. two email addresses there. Yep. It also popped uh, the links in chat for the workshop page um, and also uh, the media page on our ME website. Right. So and I also put the resource guide. Oh, sweet. Uh, yeah. Link there that Lauren helped put, put together for our junior board. So part of the junior yes. board's mission is to get younger people involved in the chapter and know about the TV Academy and that we have local chapters across the country. Sweet. And, so, and about our high school contest and then also our college yeah. contest and scholarships um, too. So Tyler, that answers the first part of your question. Um, and then your second part of the question was also what film schools did you apply to and what made you choose DePaul? So um, in my personal experience, I live in the Chicago suburbs. I didn't want to move away from school. I, for school, I wanted to commute. Um, so I wanted to look for schools in the area, in the city um, that had good film programs. So my main two schools that I was applying to was DePaul University, uh, College of Computing and Digital Media, and then Columbia College Chicago for their film program. And ultimately I decided to choose DePaul because at the time I knew I wanted to do film, but I didn't want to be completely locked into doing, you know, art if I decided suddenly my first year, like, I don't want to be a film major, I want to major in chemistry, because that was the thing that I was thinking of doing. Um, <laughs> I wanted to have that option, and DePaul had a bunch of different colleges that I could go to if I suddenly decided I didn't want to do film anymore. Um, also, DePaul hooked me up with a great scholarship, which is another reason why I wanted to go to DePaul. Um, and I feel like DePaul had a great all around education, because not only did they have an amazing film program, but also their gen eds program is amazing and awesome. And I learned a ton outside of film, which they really kind of uh, emphasize that well-rounded education of, yes, you're a film major, but also, you know, have, have knowledge about other things, um, which is awesome. It's just, a, it's a good school. I recommend it. I had a good time. Um, do, 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 Ray is asking, if I want this video to export uh, format for Instagram 9x16 or on other social media uh, platform settings, where do I set this up in the program um, on Premiere? Do you want to know in Adobe Rush or Adobe Premiere Pro, Ray? Because there's different ways of doing either. Adobe Premiere Pro, okay. Um, and I see Caleb, you also asked a question. I will come back to that in a second. Um, so Ray for Adobe Premiere Pro, let me open up Premiere Pro and I'll show you. Uh, one minute. Just gotta find my program. Um, I will share my screen once this launches. Um, just gonna call this there. Create. Gonna bring in footage. Um, cool. All right. Let me share my screen. Cool. All right. So this is Premiere Pro. Let's say you were editing, and this is a sixteen by nine timeline. So good for YouTube. Um, but like you said, if you want to do Instagram, TikTok, any of those nine by 16 phone sizes, um, the, the way that I would do it, let's say like, you know, you have your sequence here, which like sequence, um, you have your sequence here, um, and you want to resize it. What I would do is I would go to, I would take your sequence that you have that 16 by nine. I would duplicate it. Um, so then now I can rename it to nine by 16, just so you're saving yourself and have your work. Um, basically then select your sequence, right click it, go to sequence settings. And in sequence settings here, you can change 
your frame size. So because this is 720 footage, um, but we want it vertical. So you're going to do whatever, what is like 720 by 1280, I think. Um, if that's the right 1280, is that the right aspect ratio? Yeah. So you're basically going to flip it. Um, frame size, 720 horizontal pixels, uh, 1280 vertical pixels. And then you'll see that your aspect ratio changes to nine by 16. And then you're going to click OK. It's going to warn you that uh, your stuff is changing, which is fine, because we want to do that. And then now um, your sequence will be nine by 16. Um, but now your media is not going to be fully sized. You're going to have this uh, letterboxing because it's not nine by 16 footage. So either you can go to your effects panel and manually scale and reposition everything. Um, a quicker way of doing things is if you right click on footage and hit set to frame size. Um, actually, no, it will do. Set to frame size will zoom it completely out, um, but then you can manually zoom in and scale it. There's also like a whole auto reframing effect where Premiere, Adobe's doing some really cool stuff where they're doing like a lot of um, AI and computer learning, um, machine learning tools um, where there's like this auto reframe feature where basically Premiere, using uh, machine learning tries to figure out what's the subject of the frame and then tries to like punch into it so you don't have to do it manually. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'd recommend just manually going through shot by shot and doing it, um, but that is a way of resizing for socials. Uh, so hopefully that helps you, Ray. If you have a question, let me know. Uh, Caleb said, believe it or not, um, I actually have a similar situation where I have been accepted to DePaul, congrats. And I'm considering video editing or game design. Um, were you satisfied with your time studying at DePaul? Yes, I was highly satisfied with my time at DePaul. Um, game design is also in the same college, um, at least same building of CDM, um, or College of Computing and Digital Media. Um, and their game program is also awesome. Uh, <laughs> I, I had friends in the game uh, design program and the gaming floor is sweet. To any student, um, one thing cool about DePaul is everything's in a high rise downtown, which is very fun. But the fifth floor is our gaming floor. And there's a gaming lounge that's open to any student. You don't have to be a game design major. We're like between classes, my friends and I would go and you could just like rent out, you know, a Switch, Xbox, play whatever. They have a ton of games. It's all for free. Just hang out. Very fun. They also have an esports lounge. So if you're into PC gaming, you hop into the esports lounge, play some Overwatch or whatever you want to do. It's quite quite a fun time. Um, but besides all the fun perks, um, I was super satisfied with my time at DePaul um, studying. Um, the professors are great. A lot of them are or were or still are like professionals in the film industry. Um, so they have a lot of experience and a lot of stories. Um, and just a lot of great perspective on, on the media and the art form that are super eager to help you. One thing I loved about DePaul is that the class sizes are small. So you really get to know the professor and the professor really gets to know you. Um, that was one thing that was drawn to DePaul. I didn't want to have like lecture halls of like 300 students where the professor doesn't know me. I wanted to have that connection with the professor and network, um, which is something DePaul is great at. Um, so I think all of the classes especially in the editing program are, are great at DePaul. If you do the Bachelor of Fine Arts in editing, they kind of expose you to everything and anything editing, whether it's like the hyper-technical understanding video file formats and codecs and color spaces of video and all that stuff, which is hurt, makes your head hurt, but you really need to know it in order to, to work professionally, um, to more of like the very artistic like theory and editing styles and techniques of like kind of understanding how how does cutting footage make someone feel something and like understanding the power of that they they they, they give you a wide range of stuff um which is awesome so I, I recommend DePaul it's a fun time professors are awesome the equipment and stuff that you have available to you is great in industry standard um it's just a fun time 
do, 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 do. <laughs> As a PC gamer and a cartoon fan, I see this is an absolute win. <laughs> yeah, it's a good time. It's a good time. Um, so Nicole said hello to sent you my finished editing exercise. Awesome. Um, also, I emailed you earlier telling you that I have to leave a little early. So thank you for the workshop. Really enjoyed it. You are so welcome, Nicole. I think I emailed you back because you asked about recommendations for... I think After Effects was it? I think I emailed you some resources. Um, but thank you so much for joining and I will check out your edit and give you some feedback um, within the coming week or so. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Yep, I got that. Thank you, awesome, sweet. Happy to hear Nicole. Good luck with the rest of your Saturday. Does anyone wanna share? This is Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> Or even like past editing projects that you want um, critique of or something. Yeah, I'd be happy something to, short to look at whatever students have. Yep, I got Nicole's commercial. Let's see, oh, I see a Q and A right here. Tyler, uh, when I'm trying to move my media in my timeline in Rush, it selects the media above it. Is there any way to move it individually? Oh, I think I know what you mean. Um, so are you saying like you have like two video layers, but it's like adjusting layer two instead of layer one? Oh, somebody else. Yeah, okay. Um, someone else emailed the commercial. Sweet, I'll take a look at that uh, within the coming days. So Tyler, let me share my screen. I think I know what you are talking about. Where's Rush? Here's Rush. Okay, so it's like you want to manipulate layer two but it's always or you want to manipulate layer one but it's working on two um so either you manually like click uh the clip or if that's not working um if you have this expanded view out so in the bottom left make sure you have this control tracks button selected you can use the padlock to lock uh video layer two and that way layer two won't get manipulated and it's only going to be layer one they'll be working on. So hopefully that will help your issue. But that does help, thank you so much. Um, sweet Tyler, I'm happy that helps. Thank you so much for joining, glad you had a great time. Um, and I'm excited to see what you're, what you're working on. Um, awesome. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, Arthur says, I don't have my commercial done quite yet, um, but I did actually just finish a commercial for class yesterday. And if you're open to giving feedback, it's still a rough cut as a fan. Yeah, sure thing. Send it my way, Arthur. I'd love to see it and give you feedback on, on the rough cut. Um, love to see it. Send it my way. I'll uh, pop my email back in chat again in case you missed it. And if I can find it, here we go. Uh, there's my email. Um, so like I said, send your commercial that you made today, send anything you've been working on. Love to see it. Let, tell me in the email to me, tell me a little bit about what you did, what the project's for, what the goal is. Um, I'd love to take a look. Um, Nitsi asked, which editing software is your favorite? Um, so throughout my editing uh, career, I've used quite a bit. I started on, I think like everyone, like Windows Movie Maker back in the day, uh, got the job done back in middle school. Uh, and then I moved on to uh, Final Cut, was it like seven, I think at the time. Um, and then I switched over to Premiere in college, I continued using Premiere and a little bit of Avid Media Composer. Um, Avid is a beast of a program. It has, a, a, I think, a higher learning curve than Premiere does. Um, but I feel like overall favorite is Premiere. That's what I use day to day for my personal freelance business um, and also for um, any other like little personal project I'm working on. Premiere is my, my Adobe Premiere Pro is my go-to. Um, it also is just so nice because it works in conjunction with 
all of the other Adobe softwares. So After Effects, Audition, you know, Animate, Illustrator, just like that workflow that you can have between all programs. Is so nice. Um, and the dynamic linking and all that jazz. Um, so definitely Premiere is my favorite. Plus Premiere has a student discount, that is correct. Premiere does have a student discount, which is super nice. <laughs> and you should take advantage of as long as you are a student. Because <laughs> let me tell you, when you graduate and suddenly all those discounts go away, it's, it's a bit sad, it's a bit sad, but hey. Thanks for this experience. I'm asking if there's always something to learn. I'm super happy you joined us, Yvonne, and I'm happy that you were able to learn something today. Um, you both were awesome. Thank you so much, Ray. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm super happy. We had a great turnout today. Um, and I hope you guys learned something, something new. Hope you think about editing maybe in a slightly different way. Um, consider the power of a cut, power of pacing. Um, and go make something awesome. Have fun. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Making something cool that you're happy with. Telling a story. Having fun. Learning the wheel rules, but also how to break them. <laughs> Looking forward to your next class. Thank you so much, Ray. Thank you so much. Thanks for the amazing workshop. You're welcome, Arthur. Thank you so much for joining on this Saturday, taking two hours of your time. Um, Haley said thank you so much for this workshop. Aw. Thank, Thank you, you everyone <laughs> for, for joining and for um, Lauren for all the great advice. So yeah. Thank you. Um, oh, I also see good weekend. I see Nitsi also asked a question just now. Um, do you have any words of motivation for someone who has recently graduated college and is still trying to figure out how to get out there and find a job? Who that is, yeah, it's 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 a difficult situation to to be in that kind of in limbo of trying to find a job. Um, oh, Maria, thank you. Um, I feel like you're always gonna get a hundred no's before you get your one yes, but all it takes is one yes, and then you're good. Um, it's, I feel like you can't take any no's personally. Um, you just have to kind of find your, your self-confidence as an artist, know that you know what you're doing. Um, know that, you know, you're always going to, you're not, you're, you're going to find your place, you know, eventually, um, it just takes time and that's okay. And you don't need to compare yourself to others because someone is out doing something that you're not quite yet. Um, it just takes time, takes patience. Um, but just keep at it and in your downtime practice, make stuff, show stuff off to people, um, and just keep keep at it. I know it's hard. I know it's tough. I know it's like super nerve wracking. Um, but you'll find your place. You'll find your time. It'll be okay. I believe in you. It's okay. Um, great words of wisdom. Keep at it. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, have a good weekend, everybody. Love to see your edits come in. Um, if you guys finish them today, tomorrow, whenever, any other project, love to see it. Um, and yeah, great, great time. So today. I think we'll wrap up unless anyone wants to share and um, show us what they've done. Yeah, I think we're wrapping up, but this was super fun. Super, super fun. Thank you, Noah. Thank you for coming. All right, so we'll have a recording online. Um, and if there's any, you know, like uh, Lauren said, she's 
uh, please email her with your yep. products, with your projects. And she's here. I'll put her email on here one more time. And everyone have a great, great Saturday. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday, guys. Hope you have a great weekend. Um, go create something. Be creative. Be artistic. Make something that makes you happy. That's all I can recommend. All right. <laughs> <laughs>